The Honourable the Member for Labrador West. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, I, I did have a, a, some format to what I was going to say here tonight, but after listening to the last couple of speakers, I think I've thrown that at the window. <laughs> because, you know what? I agree with the co-leader of the third party. I agree with her. I agree with her. We should invest in infrastructure. And that's why we're putting in $570 million. The, the, minister, the minister of Transportation and Works got up tonight and talked about what we're investing in infrastructure. And then she has the audacity. You talk about us being arrogant. She had the audacity to get up and say, talk about the $20 million that we've got to put away in the slush fund to leverage other funds. Madam Speaker, let me list off the, just what we're putting in infrastructure. In transportation, $226 million for a priority project such as $63.7 million, million, for widening and paving of the Trans-Labrador Highway. To leverage that much more money again from the feds. Now, th where's the 20 million? You talk about arrogance. 62 million for the provincial road program and brush clearing. 5 million for every equipment replacement. 23 million, as the Minister of Finance said earlier, for construction of the Team Guju Highway. Does she travel the, the Team Guju Highway? Oh, she don't go that far out. Okay. 8.13 million for renovations to wharves and ferry terminals. Now let's go to municipal affairs. And the Minister of Municipal Affairs has gotten up in this house several times and talk about the investment that we're putting into infrastructure. 344.1 million. 344.1 million over four years for new and existing municipal infrastructure projects which will leverage $146.4 million in federal funding. What a minute. Where's the $20 million? What is she talking about? What is she talking about? Did she read the same budget that we did? Obviously not. And $18.4 million for revenue sharing and other ventures as part of the Community Sustainability Partnership, the one that the Minister of Municipal Affairs went to cabinet with and convinced his cabinet partners and, and, and colleagues that it's important that we have strong, sustainable communities. And that's why we're honoring the Community Sustainability, sustainability Partnership. So where, I, I, I fail to understand where the third party is coming from with their numbers. When they say that all we're doing is putting, putting aside $20 million in a slush fund, they call it, slush fund, to leverage money from our federal counterparts, which we're glad to say that we've been successful in doing, more than I can say for the previous administration, I might add. But $570 million in investment in infrastructure, in municipal capital works and transportation. So I, I'm, I'm at a loss. Well, maybe if they did ask questions and estimates in transportation works, didn't ask any questions. So how would they expect to know? How would you expect to know if you don't ask any questions? And that's what estimates is all about, Madam Speaker. I've, I've been on this side of the house for a short time. I have attended estimates for Municipal Affairs and Service NL. I've been on that side of the House, not as an MHA, but certainly as a staff member preparing for estimates. And I know the value of estimates. It's a place where you learn. You learn what, we, what government puts into infrastructure and services around this province. And the preparation that goes into preparing for the estimates by, by our staff in different departments is to be commended because they can account for every cent, every cent that's been expended by, by government.
So in order to get that information, though, you have to be able to come to estimates, be prepared, ask the right questions, and you will get the answers. And for the first time I've seen it ever in estimates this year, and I think the Minister of Municipal Affairs is probably the first one to lead it off, when he was finished estimates, he, said, he took his estimate book, walked across, the, walked across the floor, and handed a copy to the member from the opposition and the member from the third party, if they were present. Offered it. So all the information is there. And for, for the co-leader, and if I'm calling it the right title, but for the third party to come say, after getting all that information, to come up and say that we're only spending $20 million in infrastructure, it's on Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now, one thing that I got to say for the for estimates, because we are speaking to concurrent, so I need to be a little bit relevant, I guess. I want to say that because of the fiscal situation we find ourselves in, and our staff recognize the, the fiscal situation, they were able to identify a number of savings over the past few months. And it's, and it's helped us with our bottom line, <clears throat> even though if we had not done anything, we would be facing a $2.7 billion deficit. And the, and the leader of the third party wants us to do what Alberta did. Do what Alberta did. We don't have a legacy fund to fall back on. We don't have the money tree. We don't have that resources that Alberta has. There's no pot of gold. But Alberta is going to be, and she acknowledged it, $58 billion in debt in the next two to three years. Madam Speaker, I don't want to be part of that. We have to address the $2.7 billion deficit that we have. And I don't want to be part of that growing any bigger than it is. Because it's not us that's going to have to pay for it. It's our children that's going to have to pay for it, our children's children, and generations down the road. Now. Let me go now to the, yes, I wasn't planning on talking about municipalities tonight, but after the leader of the opposition got up and had his few words, I, I'm compelled to go back there because I did attend the m &L symposium, so I got a first hand. I was at the sessions, I was at all the sessions actually, and I heard and I saw what happened this weekend. I had many meetings with many mayors, councillors, as I represented the minister there. The minister was away on other meetings. But I didn't see anybody from the opposition or the third party there. They may have been there. I didn't see them. But I'm not saying they weren't there, but I just didn't see them. And I attended all the sessions. So <laughs> you take it from that. What a problem is I talked with many mayors. Yes, many of them do have concerns. They do have concerns. They have concerns about libraries closing. They have concerns about the, 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 uh, in the increased cost. What, you know what? There's no other group of individuals or no other sector within governance that know more about budgeting than municipal people, than municipal mayors and councillors. Because they have, they're, they're legislated by law. They have to have a balanced budget. So they had to make the tough decisions. They have to make the tough decisions so that they can continue to supply services to their residents without overburdening them in taxes. Because there's only one taxpayer. There's only one. Whether you're federal government, provincial government, or municipal, there's only one taxpayer. It's the same taxpayer. But I tell you one thing they did acknowledge, that we were in a tough situation, and we had to make some tough decisions. And they were very, very pleased for the most part. They were very pleased and, and, and very surprised, I might add, that we did not make any adjustments to the Community Sustainability Partnership regards to the municipal operating grants, no change, no change in the cost sharing ratios, the 90-10, the 80-20, 70-30, 20, which many municipalities, by the way, have taken advantage of over the last few years and have gotten uh, some great capital works done because of it. We've maintained 
the sharing of the provincial gas tax revenues. We maintained a partial HST rebate. All this is new revenue for municipalities. It's revenue for it, it's money in, in their pockets. And they were surprised, at, but very grateful, I might add, very grateful that we as a government and the minister who sat around the cabinet table was able to maintain these great initiatives. Because our government recognizes that no matter what level of government you are, you're still government and you're governing the people. And I've always believed that municipal government, because I spent 20 years in it, and I spent 15 years as, as a member of the board of directors of MNL. So I know very well how, min how municipalities and how mayors and councillors think. And they're very grateful that we've been able to maintain this. Because not only have we maintained it, but because of the partnership that's been formed, and I, I give credit to the former administration, because I was on the board of the records of MNL, and I lobbied very hard for these initiatives on behalf of the municipal people around this province. <coughs> I lobbied very hard. And I was very, very pleased when I saw this come to fruition. We got a ways to go. But we are committed as a government to improving on that, whether it's through crown lands, to the regional governance model, we're prepared to look at other initiatives. Because as of April the 1st this year, our share increased, or the share for the gasoline tax increased to 75 cents per liter, which provides $5.3 million. So that's all new money for municipalities. And one of the things that the people at MNL were very, I, I think, again, uh, pleased with was the announcement by by our government that we would have a premier's forum, the first one ever in this province. Our premier has, has recognized the value, the value of municipal municipalities and the mayors and councils around this province, and he has a lot of respect for them. And for that reason, we as a government will hold our first premier's forum on October the 5th, 2016, in conjunction with Municipality of Newfoundland and Labrador Annual General Meeting. And we spent a full hour, a full hour, with our, myself and, and the staff we had there from Municipal Affairs. We spent a full hour with the delegation that was there looking at the topics that they want to see brought up at, at the forum because it is a full day. Since when ever did a Premier's commit to spending a full day, and ministers as well, full day with mayors and councillors around this province. I think, it's, I think it's a great move forward and something that we're very proud of. Now, I want to I, I, I wanna, I go back to some of the things that the leader of the opposition said as well in his, in his few words tonight. And he talked about Labrador and he talked about different things. He talked about the population growth, that we need to grow the population. And you know what? He's right. He's right. We need to grow the population. But you know what happened under his watch when he was premier? The population dropped by 2,000 people. So here he is tonight telling us that we need to grow the population. Absolutely we need to grow the population. And we're going to grow the population. <laughs> but we're not going to follow his, in his footsteps, I can guarantee you that. And he talked about Labrador because, again, you know what? I, I, I cannot get up there tonight and not, not bring it up again. They keep bringing it up, so I'm definitely going to have to do it. And that's about the, the study for the fixed link feasibility study. And again, he's trying to say that it's, it's not a slight to Labrador, it's not, no indication that, you know, that because they don't like Labrador, they don't want to have the, have, the, have the study done. But you know what, when they, every time they get up, they talk about no diversification. We have no diversification plan. That's right. There's no diversification in the budget. The single biggest diversification plan. The single biggest project that could drive diversification in this province 
and change the way we do things, change our infrastructure, our transportation infrastructure, change our connection with the mainland, with Canada, with the North America, is to build a fixed link. What that could do for, for this province. And see, the, the, problem, the problem, Madam Speaker, is that many of those people over there, they think that a fixed link is only there to benefit Labrador. Well, they deserve it. You're right. But you know what? It's, it's a much bigger benefit than that. It's much bigger than Labrador. Labrador will see the benefits, and rightly so, because they deserve it. But when you got, when you got a, another connection to this, to this province that will facilitate the movement of transportation and the movement of goods and services to and from, whether you're exporting or importing, and you have a, a, a year-round transportation system that you can re rely on, it's reliable, it's dependable, there's no better way to diversify the economy than to have the uh, transportation infrastructure in place. And you know what? They try to tie it to, to, to whether we're cutting education, we're cutting health care in Labrador. Because we're cutting that, we're, we're wasting money on, 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 a, on a study. That, nothing could be further from the truth. Nothing could be further from the truth. And it's not the right time, they say. It's not the right time to do it. Well, the question I would ask is, when is the right time? Maybe the right time, maybe the right time was eight years ago, nine years ago, 10 years ago, when they did a pre-feasibility study. Maybe that was the right time to do it, when they had $25 billion in oil money to do it. But they didn't, because it wasn't a priority for them. Well, we see it as a priority for the future. We have a vision. I've always had a vision for Labrador that a fixed link is part of that vision. I've always had it. And I will continue to have it. But, uh, you know, maybe if we got to right for, wait for the right time, it's something that will never get done. And you talk about diversification, and I, I got to bring it a little closer to home in Labrador West when you talk about diversification and, and doing, doing things differently. And I, and I brought it up in my maiden speech, I think it was. You talk about new industry. Because if you want to, you know, there's, no, there's no region in this province, really, that's been hit harder than Labrador West because of the drop in commodity prices. And there's more commodities besides oil. There's happened to be a great commodity called iron ore. And that has tanked the same way, pardon the pun, that has tanked the same way as oil has. And nobody has suffered more because of the drop in commodities than the people of Labrador West. Nobody here, here. in this province has suffered more. And I will stand by that. Just ask the people of Wabush. Just ask the pensioners of Wabush who saw the 25% and 21% drop in their pensions, pension plans in the last year, and lost all their medical benefits because a, a, a multinational company came in, reaped the resources, or raped the resources, took off and left the people who worked for them, who, who gave their lives to them for 30, 40 years, left them in the lurch. Shame. That's what's happened. And we have, we have to make sure that doesn't, that doesn't uh, happen again. That's why my, I'm putting my PMR to forward tomorrow. <clears throat> but diverse, when you talk about diversification, you've got to look at other, other opportunities. Data warehousing, and I brought it up before. And we have a company now that's, that's prepared to look at data warehousing <coughs> on a major, major scale. It's not big jobs. It's not a lot of jobs. But as I said in my, in my maiden speech, Every single job is important in the economy of today. Every single job. So, Madam Speaker, my time is running out, but uh, I guess the only thing, the real thing that really boiled my blood tonight was the fact that the leader of the, or the co leader of the third party had the gall and the audacity, and I will say arrogance because they called us arrogant, to get up and say that we're not investing in infrastructure. What a 
I won't say it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Madam Speaker.